are you doing? <laughs> Boys will just pee anywhere. <laughs> It's like six inches of poop and pee and hay. <laughs> it is, and it's neat how it's dry on top, but the moisture is retained underneath. This shows why this is pretty good for gardening. Is that enough? Yep. Take it away. I'm driving the poop mobile. It's so nice to have power equipment. However, sometimes you still gotta do some grunt work and do things by hand. So right now, cleaning out the bedding there for the goats and recycling the manure and the hay in here in the garden. Lately, I got to thinking. Instead of building a compost pile in a different location than my garden, why not just build one right here? Right where I need it, super close. So that way when I need the compost, I can easily just spread it right here in this location. So that's what we're doing. And the first thing to do when you're starting to build a compost pile is gather your ingredients. And that's what we started with earlier today. We started with grass clippings. We've gotten a lot of rain lately, so we've had a number of places that needed to be weed eaten. And right here in these compost bays is where I used to make our compost. And since we didn't concrete the ground, we've had a lot of weeds just come up and it was really difficult to keep this area under control. So after weed eating there, as well as around the house, and yes, we live in a yurt. And then after that, we raked and gathered up all the grass clippings that I had weed eaten. Appreciate you helping out. You're welcome. And that's what we have right here. Check that out. Believe it or not, being a successful gardener is more than just putting a seed in the ground and it just growing. Because to have good produce, you need a good environment, a good soil environment for your plants to grow in. Sorry about that. I got to run over. 
Breaking a sweat yet with all that driving around here? <laughs> thanks for being mine. I see mine. how it is. I see how it is. <laughs> but thanks for driving around the poop chariot here. <laughs> Your poop chariot awaits. <laughs> Back to work, Grunt. Okay, okay. And since you're pregnant and a girl, I guess I'm not going to make you come down here and get all dirty <laughs> with this poop. <laughs> I'm going to let you be the prince of poop. Or the master of manure. <laughs> Maybe the Dalai Lama of dung. <laughs> and plus, even if I wasn't pregnant, I wouldn't want to do this job. I know. <laughs> it's really not that bad. But I understand. To have a good, healthy, and strong compost pile, you need four main ingredients. One, green material, such as grass clippings like we just added down there that we'll be putting together in our pile. But you can also add food scraps and other things that are fresh. And also, manure, like we have here. However, you wanna make sure that the manure is from animals that don't eat other animals. Like, you don't wanna use dog manure, nope. But sheep, horse, rabbit, chicken, things like that. And in addition to green material, you also need brown material, like old leaves, brown leaves, uh, straw. And in addition to those two items, you also need water and air, which will be added as we build our pile. Ah, uh, looky here at these here poop nuggets. <laughs> I didn't roll down the hill right here, but man, what happened? Wow. Oh, this piece right here, looks like it broke off. Yeah, because this piece was attached just like that right there. And both of them connected on the back of the lawn tractor. Man, so it looks like I'm gonna have to muscle this over both ways. Ah. My wife takes a break from carting it around, and then <laughs> I go breaking it. She's gonna think I was driving like Crazy Man or something. Oh man. After moving all that manure around, I was a little stinky. But over the next few days, I have been manually gathering more ingredients to make my compost pile with the help of this broken cart. And in addition to making compost, I also use our livestock to help improve our soil. And this year, in the areas that I want to improve the soil, we let the vegetation grow up. Then we set up an electric netting. After that, we bring in our goats to eat the hot stuff. Then, after the goats, we bring in the chickens to eat the low stuff. 
And with both the goats and the chickens, they leave their fertilizer behind, helping to improve the soil. And after pulling around the gorilla cart to do morning chores, attending to the turkeys and chickens, and ducks, it was time to put my compost ingredients together. First layer, we're creating a loose bottom. A loose layer of carbon. It's okay to have some sticks in there, small sticks. And that's gonna keep things loose so that way air will flow through coming up through our pile. And the bare minimum, minimum, that you want your heat or pile to be is three feet in diameter. So we're trying to go a little bit bigger than that. And it doesn't have to be super complex for making a compost pile. You basically want to alternate carbon and nitrogen. So now that we've added our carbon, let's get some nitrogen, our goat manure. Now there is some carbon in here with the bedding, but we got some good nitrogen. And you don't want to add too much nitrogen because nitrogen is the fuel for your heat. However, too much fuel will just burn up your pile and just burn it down. And carbon is the sponge. So you want a good balance of each because too much carbon and your pile's not doing anything. It's not heating up. Some more. Carbon. And grass clippings. Since they're fresh, still green, this too is nitrogen. After they're all dried out and brown, then that's carbon. Mike doesn't like the stickers being on the produce going to the compost pile because they just don't break down as fast and you know they probably have plastic in them and you really don't want plastic in your compost pile. You know, it's crazy how much food is actually wasted so you know this would have all been thrown in the trash and look this right here a lot of people they don't like to eat yellow or brown ones but look a lot of the times it's still okay with the exception of little spots right there but you can take this banana you can take out the bad places you can slice this and put it in the dehydrator and then you still have food but most people would just throw this away this is not bad now you don't want to go <laughs> eat those but like just think it's the what trillions of tons of food maybe not quite that much but it's thrown out every year just in the United States and it's crazy. In addition to composting our own food scraps we also get stuff from you know a local grocery store all their excess as well as we've also gone to juice bars before and gotten their pulp picked it up on a weekly basis and put it in our compost and they're more than willing usually to give it away because they want to see it go back to the earth too. But another option is local restaurants. Ask them if you can come pick up all of their, you know, scraps, carrot peels, all their peels and everything. Anything other than meat and oil.
Oh yeah, I just thought of another ingredient that I want to add to my compost pile. I was just burning up some wood and what's left behind for us to use? Charcoal and wood ash. Just slightly rake away some of the charcoal pieces. Try to, to just get wood ash. So the wood ash here will add to our compost pile. And wood ash is a good source of lime, potassium, and other trace minerals. And our charcoal pieces here, we can use to cook with. Just charcoal pieces though. I drank too much tea or water or what this morning, or it's all the moving around. I gotta use the bathroom. And you know what? This is actually a good spot to do it in because you can add urine to your compost pile. Believe it or not, you don't want to add poop, but you can add urine. It's a good inoculant, helps to activate the compost pile. Anywhere. I guess that's the upside of being a boy and the downside for being a mom and wife. When you gotta go, you gotta go, right? <laughs> we can definitely tell you're a farm boy because you'll just go pee anywhere. I did have to pee, but I was also inoculating my compost pile. <laughs> so you got some more ingredients for me here? <laughs> so that's what you're calling it now. I'm just inoculating the compost pile. <laughs> and yes, I did bring you old produce for the compost pile. <laughs> Fantastic. More nitrogen. <laughs> Believe it or not, I really enjoy working with compost. And you can actually also get a really good workout with building a pile and working with it. And as I was gathering carbon from the woods, right along the edge of the woods, there were some pine needles and leaves, and I'm like, oh, that'd be some really good carbon to add to my compost pile. I shovel it into the wheelbarrow, and as I had to keep going up and down the hill, I was like, whoo, my glutes are burning on this one. <laughs> Good workout. I keep building that booty. I kind of <laughs> like it. <laughs> well, anyway.
way, <laughs> now that our pile is together, we'll leave it covered for about four days. And then after that, we'll uncover it, and then we'll stir it up every other day, getting some, letting everything work, heat build up, break down, and then come together to be just a nice, good compost that we can add in the garden. Just make sure that other people don't catch you peeing in our garden in the compost pile again. You know. <laughs> uh, just saying.